Archbishop Kiprianos was born in Strobolos in 1756. At around seven years of age, he entered into monastic life at the calling of a family relative, who was the Ponomos of the monastery of Panagia Majera, Archmandrite Jaralambos. There, he began his formal studies in the school of the monastery, and in 1768, he was blessed to have as a teacher one of the students of the great Evgenios Vulgaris. In 1769, he goes to Nicosia, where for three years he studies higher letters at the Greek Museum of Nicosia, which had been founded, nurtured, and supported by the archbishops Philotheos, Paisios, and Chrysanthos. The museum was housed inside the building of the old archdiocese. Subsequently, he returned to the monastery, where in 1781 he was tonsured as a deacon by Archbishop Chrysanthos. Two years later, he accompanied his family relative, Archmandrite Karalambos, to Moldavian Valachia, staying at Iasi while organizing fundraisers for the economic support of the Panagia Mahera Monastery. The monastery had come under financial debts due to the harsh and heavy taxation imposed, as often was the case, by the Turkish governors in addition to the debt incurred due to the maintenance work required to keep the monastery from crumbling. During his stay at Iasi, Kiprianos was welcomed by the Fanariot ruler of the region, Mikhail Sutsos, and was promoted to the rank of priest, assuming the primary service to the ruler's imperial shrine at Iasi. In parallel, he continued his academic studies at the Imperial Academy of Iasi. He stayed at Iasi for 20 years. Together with Archmandrite Karalambos, he returned to the monastery on Cyprus in 1802. They brought with them many dedications, documents, manuscripts, ecclesiastic utensils, as well as paintings and portraits of themselves created by artists at Iasi. This saving intervention of Kiprianos persuaded the people, advocated by Bishop Chrysanthos, to recognize him and to offer him their permission to represent them at ecclesiastic and civil authorities. Kiprianos was concurrently elevated to the clerical rank of Grand Economos. In 1806, Kiprianos builds the Shrine of St. Eleftherios, 
which was annexed to the Panagia Mahera Monastery. With his own means, Kiprianos realized the hagiography of Saint Eleftherios and Saint Stylianos, as well as Saint Charalambos, with the dedicative sentence. Greece is proud to have you as its sentinel, but so is Greek Cyprus. Now her pastor inscribes in the column of eternal memory his beseeching of your oversight to protect him and the people of Cyprus. But come quickly, you who have suffered a lot and save us all from every disease and every other persecution. In 1809, after the passing of his friend, the Draguman Kajigiorgakis Kornisiu, the sudden exile of Archbishop Chrysanthos and the Metropolitan of, of Kitiu in May of 1810, Kiprianos receives an order from the Sultan, which affirmed the decision of the island's clergy lady conference. Kiprianos is then enthroned as the Archbishop of Cyprus on the 30th of October 1810 by the retired former Archbishop of Sinai, Constantios. As an archbishop, among Kiprianos' many accomplishments and services to the people of Cyprus are the founding of schools, first in Nicosia, which today serves as the Pancyprian High School, then in Limassol and Stropolos. His many encyclicals with deep spirituality, his support and patronage of hundreds of works, hagiography, iconography, especially those of Saint Trifon, which he sent all over the island, the founding, building, and renovation and restoration of shrines and churches, and the financial support of the less fortunate of the island. The Ottoman vindictiveness, however, soon found the means to attack him through the persecutions of the weak Cypriot Christians. Under the governorship of Kuchuk Mehmet, and under the circumstance of the breakout of the revolution in Greece in 1821, the Turks of the island found the opportunity and the excuse to violently appropriate the Cypriot Christians' homes and property and to take away the freedoms they enjoyed until then. Να μεν αρκεί Κυπρία να χάρεις τον καιρό σου, να πάεις να φαραντιστείς αν θέλεις το καλό σου. Πρέπει να πας, είδε κι ανού εχάθεις δίχως άλλον. Ας έβρει μέρα το πορνό δα μέσα δα, να σε νεκρός εις την κρεμασταρκάν, είτε νεκρός των πάλων. Άνου να πάμε γλίωρα, τα μάξιν καρτεράσε. Έθελο κι όρογλου έγιον αφίω που τη χώρα, γιατί αφίω το κακό είναι να γίνει περί του. Θέλω να μείνω κι όρογλου κι ας πάνε να με σκοτώσουν. Ας με σκοτώσουν συνεμέν κι άλλοι να γλιτώσουν. Έφευκο κι όρογλου, γιατί αφίω ο φευκός μου να γεννεί θανατικόν εις τους ρωμιούς του τόπου, να βάλω τη συρτοθυλιάνη στον λαιμό του κόσμου, παρά το γέμα τους πολλούς σε γκάλιον του πισκόπου. Ας πει σκόπια Κυπρία ναι μη λέτ πάση του τόπου. Εγύρε ψάσε να σου πω πως είμαι προσταμένος από την πόρτα και κρατώ στο χέρι μου φερμάνιν. Πως έχω μια άλλη μπροστά ή μου το ψηλό διβάνιν. Θα αρκοντολώ εν τους Ρωμιούς τους μυαλούς του του τόπου να τους συνάξω μόνο μιας και να τους συσκοτώσω. Κι ακόμα αν η μπόρια των κόσμων να γυρίσω, ήθελα να σφάξω τους δρομιούς, ψυχή να με αφήσω.
Η Ρωμιοσύνη εφηλή συνότζερη του κόσμου. Κανένας δεν ευρέθηκε για να την εξηλείψει. Κανένας. Γιατί σέπει την που τάψει ο Θεός μου. Η Ρωμιοσύνη να χαθεί όντας ο κόσμος λείψει. Σφάξε μας ούλους κι ας γεννεί το γέμα μας αυλάτζι. Κάμε τον κόσμο ματσεριών και τους Ρωμιούς τραούλια. Μα ξέρε πως σύλλαντρον, όντας σκοπή καβάτζι, τριγύρω του πετάσουν τετρακόσια Ο Τούρκος ό,τι τσέφιε και μείνα μανισή τους. Εγωνατίσαν ούλοι τους για να προσευχηθούσι. Τι ούλοι εκλαμουριστήκασι. Και τσι είναι η προσευχή τους. Οι τουμπού μέσα στην καρκιά την ώρα που πονούσι. Στην ιστερκάν της προσευχής, έτσι γονατισμένη, είπαν κλαμμένη η Ανά και με φωνή κομμένη. Θεέ μου, και συγχώρησε τους λάσκους που μας μισούσι. Θεέ μου, και ξυσκλάβωσε την άκαρη φίλη μας. Θεέ μου και στη χώρα μας και δέχτου την ψυχή μας. Summoning all the leaders of the Christians of the island, clergy and lady, to a meeting to listen to the recently received Sultan's edicts as a ruse, the Turkish hegemon instead proclaimed to them the capital punishments they would receive. First to be executed and first among the martyrs would be Archbishop Kiprianos. Beginning on the 9th of July, with the execution of Kiprianos, the slaughters did not end until the end of the month, resulting in more than 500 innocent people becoming martyrs of the island of Aphrodite. The Virgin Mary, the Panagia, was dressed in red and black. Homes were left empty, drenched in blood.
The slaughters began on the 9th of July, Saturday, and did not end until the end of the month. Even though the archives indicate the execution of 486 Cypriot Christians, the number is believed to exceed 500. 36, in addition, are documented to have converted to Islam as a means of salvation. However, many years later, they professed and returned to Christianity. Two hundred years later, the martyric course of the Cypriots continues. The current generation stands in awe in front of the mausoleum of the martyrs. They reminisce and remind themselves of the sacrifices made. These martyrs are held in high spiritual and moral stature, and they are role models for this generation to continue and to foster the struggles for freedom, as well as to serve as ambassadors to all people worldwide for the reunification of the blood-soaked island of Aphrodite. Slaughter us all and make our blood a river. Slaughter all our people and kill the Romii like goats. But beware, when the aging poplar is cut, 300 seedlings sprout around it. The plow, emboldened as it tills, feels it is indestructible. But it is always the plow that is worn, the plow that is ruined. You are so bitter inside of you, but if you must slaughter, slaughter those who are armed and somewhere else. Why hurt us? Our hands are clean. We have no arms and have been undeniably compliant. At that moment, Musalim lifted up his eyes and looked at him sweetly and opens up to him and says, Whatever a man suffers comes from inside his head. The passive man loses his life by the sword. And you too, if you are passive, you are losing your life. Stop talking. I knew this already before you started talking. Stop trying to dry up the sea. You are wasting words. In vain you are delaying your job. Can you put out the sun with a puff of breath alone? Call your hangman. Prepare the gallows for our hanging. Musalim and all the Turks around him, as they heard this, looked like a thunderbolt struck them. They all stopped talking and were looking at one another. Each one was trying to hide their shame. Musalim then realized he was wasting his efforts and ordered to move the bishops away from him, and they took them to the jail without separating them. The Turks, now by themselves, turned to planning the evil, and they decided to bring in witnesses, so they brought a slow-witted shepherd from Malunda. Musalim says, Dimitri, do not be afraid, because I see you as one of my own men. What is it that you want? Just tell me, and do not be shy. I only ask, my lord, to go to my village. Since you kept me locked inside the city, my herd is all over the mountainside. Let me out for two days and take my soul afterwards. I only want to know what happened to my flock. I will come back, and even on my return, I will be back with a handshake and a goat for you. I do not have, my lord, an assistant or a servant, and was told my goats are dying from hunger. I only had one son in my family, and have been without him for a month now. One Sunday, when we were together, he and I, and were catching birds with the sticky sticks, I offered him to go and join those in the war march, and he went but did not return. May that day be on fire. They told me they left from the Carpus Peninsula with a group of locals who went further away, where the young are fighting, and towards Constantinople. 
If they are fighting for a good cause, and my son with them, I accept it if he is lost for God, or if he dies from a bullet, even if I am left alone to live without him. But if they are fighting to make trouble, may their mother's milk be for shame. It has been a while since my son left me. I am all alone to handle the herd. I sleep and wake up alone, and alone I stand by the watering hole to water. In this condition, my lord, how much longer can I remain? Melancholy has taken over me, because eating eats me, drinking melts me. My grief is so big, my heart is burning. I used to wake up at dawn to go to wash myself, and was always singing, and felt the whole world was singing with me, and was making people mad at me day and night, and played my flute, and the mountains were singing. My eyes did not know grief nor tears. I will allow you, he said, to go to your village, and will forgive all your taxes as long as you live, and if you have debts, I will pay those for you and will even count in your palms 100 gold coins. You said your bishops wanted to see you rebel, to have the Christians slaughter the Turks. You said your bishops, even the children, the young men and the old and the women also, were taking up arms and bullets and gunpowder, and others heard this, as I did, from your own mouth. As for me, my lord, I only heard others say that a local monk came from over there and he brought a bunch of papers from the war front, and as soon as he passed them out, he disappeared, and all those papers were about the war. Everything else you said, I never did hear. Why are you lying to me? Are we your servants? You said it with your own words, in your own story. Say it, or else I kill you. I cut your head off. Bring the headsman to stand here and be ready. No, my lord, do not spill blood on me. Pity me, the unfortunate. It is a pity and a sin. Let me say it. Yes, it is true, my lord. Fear brings hell, as the saying goes. I will change the bitter to sweet, and the twisted into straight, and I will say as you wish, my lord, in order to escape. What you said is true, my lord. I bear witness. I saw it with my own eyes. I heard it with my own ears. It all happened. I saw it all. I say it and say it again. My God, forgive me, my heart is clean. The shepherd said all this and cried uncontrollably. The Turks then spoke into each other's ears and put on a paper the shepherd's confession. And who knew that really what the confession said? And they brought it to poor Dimitri and he touched it. And he put his fingerprint on it and sealed it that way. Musulim then spoke to him sweetly and said to him, Stop crying and I will release you. He gave him a sweet look and smiled at him and gave the order to take him away to the back. Then they were all talking to each other for some time about those to be killed and opened a book to see who were from the countryside and who from the city and how many to hang and how many to knife. And there were five or six who said, too many, it is a pity. And Muslim said, all of them are to die. The sun by now was up high, it was noon, and the Muslim prayer was called from the minaret. And they stopped talking and left the book there, and all went to noon prayer gathering. The prison was dark and small, where the four bishops were sitting alone and had on the side of the garden an iron door, and their talk with soft voices was heard. Bishop Lavrentio said, O oh, the blessed one, God protected, but also arrogant. He brought those bad papers, and without thinking, he filled the island all over, and gave them everywhere he went, and now they came back to haunt us. Bishop Maletio says, I hate injustice. This man tried to do a good deed. How can we blame him that he was the cause? It was God's will, and that is what happened. No one ever says, Charon is to fault. They always blame the deceased. Then Kipriano says, these are all words in vain. One way or another, we are finished. We are lost. 
any way it happened, God knows from on high, we should only care about those who remain. At that moment, the garden door creaked open and a handsome, tall and well-dressed young man came in who looked joyful and seemed to come from an aristocratic family. But he was breathing heavy like he was overexerted. He was holding a clean bag under his arms and he went to Kiprianos and told him, speaking fast, My father sent me and I came running and I brought for you a set of his clothes for you to put on. So the two of us go to our house secretly in hiding. So get dressed quickly, do not delay. My son, who is your father? Say his name to me so that I know. My father is Kyoroglu, and he told me to hurry, to find you quickly and to bring these clothes to you, and to bring you to our house right away, not to leave you here. Get dressed, and we go, and hope God is on our side. My father is at our house, and he is waiting for us. We will run through the garden while hiding, and after we climb over the wall, we take the road, as if we go, we get into trouble. If they say anything, I will cut them up in pieces. My son, go and tell him to continue to do his duties. And as for me, I am just fine here where I am. His kindness and his good heart, even when I am hanging, I will remember. Give him my heartfelt regards and tell him even more, that I will thank him even when I am dead and buried if he does an even greater kindness in our land from now on to do all he can so no greater injustice happens to Romeo Sini. Tell him all this and may God grant him many years. I too will stand up for all these things you said and will keep your words deep inside my soul and I vow to keep my faith and I will not forget. But returning to my father without you, I am embarrassed. At the same time, from the other door, a noise was heard, and they saw the locket to turn. And the young man immediately arose, and in his hands he had a pistol. He became angry and then cooled down, and he took a big jump and landed in the garden. The door then opened all the way, and a Turkish leader dressed nobly came in and said to them, I came to see you, to talk with you because I feel very sad with your predicament. I brought some food and drink for you to have because they will be looking for you pretty soon. I ran and saw three gallows ready to use. The two were from the plane tree and the other one from the sycamore tree and all three were like death and I felt terrible and I lost my strength. I came to tell you and to comfort you that I will push today. I will do all that I can. I will take down the gallows and give you a break. And the papers they wrote, I will tear up. I will turn the sour sweet and the wild to tame and the orders reverse to save you. Four pillars like you, four leaders of this land. Is it not a pity for you to hang? Of all things, life is the sweetest of all. Only a word from you and you will be saved.